Hi, I'm Claire Milliken. Welcome to episode 155 of Art This Week. In this week's episode, Dallas-based artist Tom Orr walks us through his studio. This studio visit was made possible through a collaboration with McKinney Avenue Contemporary's Mac Pack. Now, for Art This Week. I was explaining this piece at Love Field that I'm doing, and uh, it's, that's a, a rendering that, w that we did on the computer, so it's not real great, but it's right at, as you walk into the front doors of Love Field. And this was the original model over here, and this was going to be in the lobby, but uh, it didn't work out for several reasons, so they moved it out front. So the new piece is, it's a little more elongated and more of an arch than this, but pretty much the same uh, construction and everything. And this was a piece I had at Barry Whistler's, uh, and this is the, the method of construction. It's this uh, hollow aluminum tube. It's been powder coated, and then these colors are applied uh, later on, you know, uh, after the powder coating process. This, this is actually just a real uh, exterior house paint on this, but for the, for the piece at Love Field, it's going to be an autom uh, automobile finish, you know. And then these are applied later. Uh, but it's the same kind of, same method, and... Uh, this is the uh, this is the material, the uh, aluminum tubing. Yeah, everything that was a, that was a real big deal too, because on the model I tried to get it as close as possible to the size, but I missed it in a few places. So it's going to change slightly, but it's everything is you can buy. I mean, it's available thickness wise. Even the large ones. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's not a problem. Some of the smaller ones were a little more difficult. But there has, it is kind of an engineering feat to do this, and we've just about got it all worked out. So uh, come Monday, I think they're going to have everything solved. But, uh, you know, so I'm pretty excited about it. And this is so interesting. I build these models all the time. And years ago, I was talking to Francis about this earlier. You know, years ago, I thought building a model was absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's going to stop the creative process. It's a waste of time and money and energy. Well, the bigger things started getting and you start making like mistakes with stuff, I realized you better make a model because you have a few things figured out. So now I do it kind of all the time. And uh, like a lot of times when I have a model like this, I'll, I'll put it up really high. So, you know, you know put your head right here because that's where, where you're, you're going to see it from, you know. But anyway, I do make a lot of models now and, and I consider models not sculptures and, and people are always saying, you, Will you sell me these models? And it's absolutely not. I mean, that's just, I don't do that. I don't make toys and stuff and, you know. What's the original material of, the, of your model? Oh, it's this great styrene. It's solid uh, plastic styrene. It, they use, it, model builders use it for this very thing. And uh, it works out great for me. Anyway, I have a bunch of these models all over the place. And uh, so I decided, you know, I'm not gonna sell them as models, but I really like looking at them, you know. So I took some of the very early ones, and that's sort of where this piece in the corner came from. So it, it, it does all these things I really like, you know, with the reflections and the shadows, and I actually turned it into a piece. I mean, like Francie, I wasn't going to tell anybody that, but I just did, didn't I? <laughs> you know? Uh, so, uh... But it, you know, you've changed the context of how people experience it. Mm -hmm. So now it becomes art for you. It's art to me now, instead of, instead of being a... Wow, it's a, it's a great affordable sculpture piece. Well, it's not. It's a model, but this is... What's the story on Love Field? Yeah, well, it was... Uh, a well, they selected several artists, and we were all kind of shortlisted, and, you, you know, you'd go through that whole process. And, uh, like I said, I was against about three or four other people for a, an interior piece, being this one. And when I said it didn't work out, there were some problems, some issues with uh, housekeeping, how they would keep you know, things off of it. And then the biggest thing was uh, so problems with uh, people tripping over it and whatnot, which I thought I'll solve those problems along the line, but they said there's too many. So this is an interesting story. They said, actually, you didn't get the commission. Man, it was a nice commission, too. And I really, really loved this piece. And so, I was, you know, it's happened before, but I thought, damn, you know, this is really a good one not to be in on, you know. And so they called me two to, a day later, they called me and said, you know, we love that piece so much would you be willing to do it in a different location? So that's how it got moved to the front, you know? How do you think about color, Tom? How do I? Mm -hmm. It's something brand new to me, I'll tell you. And I, because I normally never use color at all. If I do, it's like real simplistic, you know, black and green or something. And for this, 
I don't know. To be honest with you, I got colors I thought were I liked, and I use them very sparingly, and which was difficult because I'm not used to working with color, and it's just something that I found interesting for this piece. So it's I don't have any kind of theory. Yeah, and you'll see it's kind of restrained a little bit, you know. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, Frances was saying she likes things that kind of confuse her. Mm -hmm. When this, in this piece, it's a real simple piece, but the shadows are a little confusing, the re reflections are a little confusing, <laughs> and so is the color, but I think all that confusion kind of adds up to a lot of interesting things happening, you know. And the other thing is it's massive, it's very big. It's 30-some-odd uh, feet by 20 feet by, I don't know, 20-something. But since it is open, you don't get that feeling of this gigantic monster thing that you don't want to walk under. It's like, you know, it's delicate at the same time, even though it's really big. Is the lighting LED? No, no, everybody asks it. Come here, I'll show you. It's the same as the green one over there? Uh-huh. It's not, it's, not it's not LED, it's this stuff called electroluminescent wire. And I, we, I first saw it in, uh, when we were doing the opera, I was looking at all this different stuff, and they use it in theater a lot. It's, it's real low voltage. low voltage, in fact you have to have inverters and stuff, uh, relatively cheap and it's flexible, you know, no heat. So I, I thought it was great looking, but it is kind of, they use it for sort of tacky costumes and whatnot, you know, Las Vegas <laughs> type stuff. And so I thought this would be great if you could use it for artwork because it looks like a drawn line, you know. Mm -hmm. So we put this on our house, on, on the structure we have by our house. It's like the stuff they make uh, greenhouses out mm -hmm. of. I, I thought, man, you just push that stuff up in there, and that that enables you to kind of put it up in space, and it uh, it still keeps that wonderful, you know, line quality. It's just two layers of that plastic turned different ways, you know. And I did the same thing in Japan. I did a huge installation, a whole room like this, not as a grid, but as converging lines, and uh, it worked out pretty. It's a pretty interesting piece. Uh, has anybody asked about the chairs? It's an older piece, but that's something I used to draw. I do this as a drawing all the time. It's in there. I'll show you. Okay. But not with this I going think on. I'm thinking of like a group therapy group. You know how they. Well, everybody's got their own take. Uh, here's here's my <laughs> idea on it. And what I did was that uh, I like this idea of uh, chairs as pedestals. In other words, a chair holding up something that's sculptural. I think mm -hmm. that's kind of an interesting way to approach it. So I had a few of these chairs, and I put them in a ring, and I, I said, that would be great, and I started drawing it and making different things. So I had a bunch of materials left over from project, your project, because okay. I had to buy a ton of this stuff. And uh, anyway, I had this yeah. left over, and so I, I thought, I'm just going to try these rods and see what I can do, you know? Mm -hmm. And I set it up like in one afternoon, and they're all, there is in a pattern, mm -hmm. not mathematical pattern, but just a way to make them tie together, mm -hmm. and they're all just leaning on each other. So but, they're not... They're not attached, no. Okay. Wow. But that's the whole idea. The, the chairs have an interest to me. Mm -hmm. The rods have an interest to me. The shadows, all that, all that works together. And that was the idea. Try to make these things that do not really normally get seen together, make it into one piece, you know? It's kind of the problem. And it, it actually happened very quickly. But, mm -hmm. uh, and I've shown it one time. Well, it's, is it hard to dismantle and put back? It was very hard, but I thought, oh, I'm so smart. I'll get the ladder out and I'll photograph it and I'll take a row off and then you know, keep making photographs and then it, you can build, isn't that smart? Well, it didn't work at all. But before I did that, I'd made a model just as a backup. So I had to use the little model to actually, because if you, know, you shoot straight down, it, it, you couldn't read it. They didn't read correctly, you know? So, but. You would think it would. You would, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't. <laughs> We want to thank Tom for the studio visit. He is represented by Barry Whistler Gallery and more information on him can be found at barrywhistlergallery.com. We also want to thank the McKinney Avenue Contemporaries Mac Pack for allowing us to join in on the studio visit. More information on the Mac Pack can be found at the-mac.org. That's it for art this week. Thanks for watching. Still got your polar